Greetings aspirants. Before starting, it's our time to congratulate this 927 candidates who have cleared this year preliminary examination from Shankar IAS Academy. We wholeheartedly wish them success in their mains examination. A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindu News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 1st of July 2022. The list of articles we are going to discuss today is displayed on the screen. You can go through it. Now let's start our discussion. Let's start our discussion with this article. This text and context article is elaborating about a new analytical series on road safety called Road Safety 2022. This series has provided data on road accidents, reasons behind it and the interventions needed. Especially it shows how much such interventions can reduce road accidents and mortality and increase road safety. Okay. So let us see the findings of this analysis and the recommendations provided in the series. Before that, the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference, you can go through it. See the Road Safety 2022 is a new series of the Lancet. The Lancet is a journal or publication that publishes the best science from the best scientists worldwide and it provides an unparalleled global reach and impact on health. This new series is three paper series as you can see here. These papers highlight the challenges and opportunities for the second decade of action for road safety. What is the second decade? See United Nations has a concept called decade of action with regard to sustainable development goals. It calls for accelerating sustainable solutions to all the world's biggest challenges like poverty, gender, climate change etc. Here know that there are two sustainable development goal targets on road safety. One is SDG target 3.6 which aims to half the number of road traffic deaths and injuries by 2020. Second is SDG goal 11 which focuses on cities and sustainable development. It includes road safety also. Based on these targets, the DK 2021 to 2030 was declared the decade of action for road safety for improving global road safety. Under this, there is a target of preventing at least 50 percentage of road traffic deaths and injuries by 2030. It is called the second decade of action because already the last decade of 2011 to 20 was declared as a decade of action for road safety. Okay. See, the second decade was necessary because even after the first decade, the death and disabilities from road traffic injuries did not reduce. Still, an estimated 1.35 million people die every year from road traffic injuries and more than 50 million are injured or disabled. So, this necessitated a high level global attention and the second decade was introduced. Now, the papers under the Road Safety 2022 highlights the challenges and opportunities for the second decade of action for road safety. The purpose behind this is to enable the 2021 to 2030 decade as a decade of implementation and delivery that leads to a substantial decline in the risk and global health burdens of road traffic injuries. Now, simply telling what is the status of road safety is not enough. So, the series has pointed out preventive interventions for mortality reduction. These preventive interventions target the four main risk factors for road injuries. These are the risk factors that consistently increase the risk for road injuries and deaths at the population level. This includes speeding, drink driving, helmet use and use of seat belt or child restraint. The series has statistically found how much road traffic injuries and related deaths could be prevented if these risk factors had a proper road safety interventions. Okay, with these basics, let us get to the global level findings of this series. First, it was found that road traffic injuries are the eighth leading cause of death globally for all ages. It was also found that more than half of these deaths are attributable to vulnerable road users. Vulnerable road users include pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists. The RTIs, that is the road traffic injuries, not only affects the individual and her dependents but also affects the economy. It was found that road traffic collisions reduce country's annual gross domestic product by a range of 1 to 3 percentage. Another major finding was 
low income and middle income countries have the greatest burden of fatal and non fatal road traffic injuries in other words global road mortality is a leading cause of death in many low income and middle income countries in fact 93 percentage of the world's road fatalities occurs in low income and middle income countries so the risk of road traffic death is three times higher in low income countries than in high income countries actually around 104 countries showed an increase in the number of road traffic deaths during the past 10 years this shows that sdg target 3.6 was not at all achieved now with respect to the four main risk factors it was found that addressing these risk factors could make it possible to avert between 25% and 40% of all fatal road injuries and deaths that occur globally this many lives could be saved globally due to interventions in these risk factors now what about india see as per the data from ncrb report which is called uh, accidental deaths and suicides in india 2020 a total of 354796 road accident cases were reported during 2020 the road accident cases have decreased compared to 2019 but this may have happened due to pandemic induced lockdowns now these road accidents have caused 133201 deaths during 2020 and it was also found that in mizoram punjab and uttar pradesh road accidents caused more deaths compared to the persons injured then more road accidents occur in rural areas than in urban areas plus two wheelers accounts for maximum number of fatal road accidents okay it was also found that over speeding is the major cause of road accidents and deaths second cause is dangerous or careless driving or overtaking other than this the union ministry of road transport and highways also releases a separate report on this topic it is called road accidents in india you can see here that the ministry's data slightly differs from ncrb's data now what the lancet series says it has found that these many lives could be saved in india due to interventions in these risk factors drink driving interventions is not included because data for that is not available overall intervention in speeding of vehicles itself can save more than 20000 lives in india every year these were the major findings all of these are from a prevention perspective now one of the major recommendations was enforcing the legislation road safety laws and regulations are effective in reducing road traffic injuries such regulation should be enforced strictly with high penalties for violations this means in india the amended motor vehicles act should be implemented by state governments uniformly and completely along with this india should implement the recommendations by the sundar committee in 2007 the main recommendation was the creation of the national road safety and traffic management board see this board is to be an apex board at national level to promote road safety and traffic management in the country it should have members and experts drawn from various fields like road engineering automobile engineering traffic laws medical care etc the board is proposed to have regulatory and advisory functions so it would set standards and designs for vehicles and national highways it would also advise the government on various road safety aspects it was also proposed to promote road safety research formulate road user behavior strategies lay guidelines for establishing medical care and rehabilitation and also conduct safety audits from the proposed roles and functions of the board itself we can say that many issues with road travel will be handled by the board and it will aid in reducing road accidents and deaths so the lancet findings should be taken as a caution and india should implement sundar committee recommendations so that's all regarding this news article in this news article discussion we saw about the lancet report and its global level findings then we also saw about ncrb report which is called accidental deaths and suicides in india 2020 we concluded by discussing the way forward regarding the road accidents in india with these key learned points let's move on to next news article discussion See this article here is about Maharaja Sarfoji II or Sarfoji the second. It says that a year long commemoration of the 225th anniversary of the coronation of Maharaja Sarfoji II opened this week. And the celebration has put the spotlight on the multifaceted personality 
who made Tanjavur a byword for cultural and scientific accomplishments. And this is the crux of the article given here. In this context, let us understand about Maharaja Sarfoji II from prelims perspective. First of all, know that Sarfoji was a son of Chahaji whose family was in the protection and patronage of King Tulaja II and his father King Pratap Singh. These kings, they were Maratha rulers. And also know that Sarfoji was born on 24th September 1777. He was adopted in 1787 by King Tulaja II. Sarfoji II became the Raja of Tanjavur on 30th June 1798. The most famous and lasting rule was that of King Sarfoji II who came to the throne in 1798 AD. And by that time, the British had ruled most of the India and Tanjavur or Tanjur has to be handed over to the British throne. So, King Sarfoji II was deprived of all power. The revenue and judicial systems were taken over by the East India Company, leaving King Sarfoji II a mere head. Okay? So, this will give you a brief introduction about Sarfoji II. Now, moving on to his accomplishments and interests. See, he devoted his life to the pursuit of culture and Tanjavur became renowned as a center for learning. His Saraswati Mahal library is endowed with manuscripts, printed books collected from all over the world. This library is boasted for treaties on Vedanta grammar, music, training of elephants and horses etc. And his scientific bent of mind is demonstrated by his collection of various instruments like the air pump, electric machine, an ivory human skeleton etc. Note that he established the Danvantri Mahal where physicians of Allopathy, Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddha researched their systems of medicine. He had the important herbs studied and catalogued in the form of acusite hand paintings. King Sarfoji patronized music, dance and the fine arts. He started a school and gave free boarding and lodging facilities. Note that he gave importance to Tamil education and to legible handwriting. He also opened up education to girls. He revolutionized education for the female child by appointing women teachers. He constructed 10 water tanks and a number of wells for civic use. He implemented an underground drainage system for the whole of Tanjavur. And his printing press in Devanagari type established in 1805 was one of the largest and first of its kind in southern India. He also established a stone type press called Navavidya Kalanidhi Varnayantra Sala. Okay. He also maintained veterinary hospitals. He took special care to treat eye ailments. He himself was an expert in treating eye diseases and in performing cataract operations. See, Sarabendra Vaidya Muraigal. It is a book available at Saraswati Mahal Library is based on the medical prescriptions of Danvandri Mahal. And the court Tamil Pandit have written poems on various diseases and treatments under the orders of the king. Also, King Sofoji was greatly interested in science and technology. He had astronomical instruments for a close study of the stars. He also made them accessible to students of educational institutions that he established. He built ships of various types and sizes to carry out shipping trade with Colombo, Jaffna, Lakshadweep, the Andamans, Kerala and Madras. He also had a gun factory and naval store with all kinds of naval instruments like telescope and compass. He practiced martial arts and patronized chariot racing, hunting and bullfighting. Sarja Mahal, Sadar Mahal, Manara Fort were built by him. He installed lightning rods on top of these buildings and on the tower of the Brahadishwara temple. He commissioned artists to paint murals and frescoes on the temple walls and the ceiling. As the pattern of inscriptions, he had the history of the Bosle dynasty inscribed on the southern western wall of the Brahadishwara temple. He also built new temples like the Vitoba temple, Manikarnikeshwara temple and the Kasi Viswanatha temple in Tanjavur. And not only that, he also liberally funded the construction of churches and schools run by Christians. Likewise, he continued the endowments to Muslims initiated by his forefathers. He also authored many literary works. He encouraged folk art forms such as Kuravanji dance drama and authored a book called Devendra Kuravanji. He also established a band troupe in the palace and introduced western musical instrument like the clarinet and violin in the court. So, this again proves that the King Sarfoji patronized music, dance and the fine arts. 
and finally know that he was one among the four honorary members of the Royal Asiatic Society. So that's all about this news article. In this news article, we saw about the King Sophoji II and a brief history about him. Then we saw his accomplishments and interests. With these learned points, let's move on to next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article talks about the landslip that occurred in Manipur. See, eight people were killed in this massive landslip. As many as 45 are feared to be trapped in the debris. Also, a flood alert has been made in that area. The debris from the landslip has blocked the mountain river Rijai. And this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us learn about the landslips or landslides in detail. Also, we will discuss some of the causes of these landslides or landslips. Okay? First, what are the landslides or landslips? See, landslides are a natural phenomena. They are relatively rapid and perceptible movements. The materials involved are relatively dry. Landslides often take place in conjunction with earthquakes, floods and volcanoes. Particularly in the hilly terrain, landslides have been a major and widely spread natural disaster, often taking toll on life and property and therefore becomes a major concern. Okay? The size and shape of the detached mass depends on three main conditions. One is the nature of discontinuities in the rock. The second one is the degree of weathering. And the third one is the steepness of the slope. Depending upon the type of movement of materials, several types are identified in these categories. First, take slump. It is the slipping of one or several units of rock debris with a backward rotation. See, this backward rotation is with respect to the slope over which the movements take place. Okay? Secondly, take the debris slide. It is the rapid rolling or sliding of earth debris without backward rotation of mass. And thirdly, take the debris fall. It is nearly a free fall of earth debris from a vertical or overhanging face. And finally, take the rock slide. It is the sliding of individual rock masses down bedding, joint or fault surfaces. See, over steep slopes, rock sliding is very fast and destructive. See, don't be confused with the term rock slide with rock fall. Rock fall is a free falling of rock blocks over any steep slope, keeping itself away from the slope. And rock falls occur from the superficial layers of the rock face. This is what distinguishes it from rock slide, which affects materials up to a substantial depth. Okay? Thus, in simple words, landslides is a mass of earth, rock or soil that falls down the slope of a mountain or a cliff. Okay? See, there is one more type in this landslide which is called as lahar. It is the mud flow or debris flow that originates on the slope of a volcano. This is usually triggered by heavy rainfall, eroding volcanic deposits, sudden melting of snow and ice due to heat from volcanic vents. Or the breakout of water from glaciers, crater lakes or lakes dammed by volcanic eruptions. Now let us see the causes of landslide. Landslides are caused by various factors. It can be caused because of heavy rain and deforestation is also one of the main reasons for landslides. Because trees, plants etc. keep the soil particles compact and uh, due to deforestation the mountain slopes lose their protective layers so the waters of the rain flows with unimpeded speed on these slopes. And it can be also caused by earthquakes as well. For example, in the Himalayas, the tremor occurred because earthquakes unstabilized the mountains which led to landslides. Volcanic eruptions in specific regions can also cause landslides. See, landslides often occur in mountain regions while making the roads and construction. A large number of rocks has to be removed which can cause landslides over there. In the regions of Northeast India, landslides occur because of shifting cultivation. And due to increasing population, a large number of houses are being created which leads to the creation of large amount of debris which can cause landslides. Because of these reasons, landslides occurs. Okay? So that's all regarding this news article. In this news article discussion, we saw about landslides and the causes of landslides. With these key learned points, let's move on to next news article discussion. See this image here. It depicts a scene from the Uttara Swayamvaram Kathakali. And it features Kalamandalam Balasubramaniam as Duryodhanan and Kalamandalam Atul as Banumati at Margi. And this is about the news. So in this context, let us learn more about Kathakali from prelims perspective. First of all, know that in the temples of Kerala, two forms of dance drama that is Ramanatam and Krishnatam evolved under the patronage of feudal lords. 
they narrated episodes from ramayana and mahabharata these folk drama traditions later became the source of kathakali which derived its name from the words katha meaning story and kali meaning drama it is closely related to kodiyattam which is a sanskrit drama tradition and other ancient martial arts performance also so it is a wonderful combination of music dance and drama however with the breakdown of the feudal setup kathakali began declining as an art form it was revived in the year 1930 by the famous malayali poet v n menon under the patronage of mukunda raja now coming to the features of kathakali dance kathakali is generally an all male troupe performance there is a minimal use of properties in the kathakali recital however very elaborate facial makeup along with the headgear is used for different characters the main feature of the costume is a large billowing skirt for male characters see here different colors have their own significance green indicates nobility divinity and virtue red patches behind the nose indicate royalty black color is used to indicate evilness and wickedness yellow color is for saints and women and completely red painted face indicates evil white beard indicates beings with higher consciousness and divinity okay now coming back to the dance form see it involves both dance and drama and the two cannot be clearly separated most of the kathakali recitals are a grand representation of the eternal conflict between good and evil it draws its themes from the stories narrated in the epics and the puranas it is also called as the ballad of the east generally the language used for kathakali songs is manipravalam which is a mixture of malayalam and sanskrit know that in kathakali dance form music is important to rightfully convey the entire drama to the viewers now coming to the next important part which is gestures they are perhaps the crown jewel of the entire dance drama kathakali is remarkable in the representation of the rasas through movements of eye and eyebrows through which the story is conveyed nine important facial expressions called navarasas are thought to convey different emotions extensive hand gestures are also used therefore this dance form calls for strenuous training kathakali is generally performed in open air theaters covered with coarse mats or temple premises with lush green trees of kerala providing a backdrop a brass lamp is used for lighting the arrival of dawn accompanied with the continuous sound of drums chanda and madala marks the beginning and end of kathakali recital Finally let us see the famous proponents of this dance form they include Guru Kunchu Kurup Gopinath Kottakal Sivaraman Rita Ganguly etc so that's all regarding this news article in this news article we saw about the kathakali and its significant features this is very important in prelims point of view with these key learned points let's move on to next news article discussion see this article here as kerala debates the supreme court order for maintaining at least a kilometer of eco sensitive zone for protected areas the gadgil report once again springs back to public discourse see we are not going to discuss the issue in detail today instead we are going to learn about the gadgil committee and its recommendations on western guards okay see the western guards ecology expert panel popularly known as gadgil commission was headed by ecologist madhav gadgil it was an environmental research commission appointed in the year 2010 the report was submitted on 31st august 2011 now let us see some of the important recommendations of the report see the panel designated the entire western guards as ecologically sensitive area and assigned three levels of ecological sensitivity to different regions of it These are termed as ecological sensitive zone 1, ecologically sensitive zone 2 and ecologically sensitive zone 3. See the Gadgil Commission recommends that no new dams based on large scale storage will be permitted in ecological sensitive zone 1. And the panel also recommended new environmental clearance for mining in ecological sensitive zone 1 and 2. And it recommended phasing out of mining in ecological sensitive zone 1 by 2016. and continuation of existing mining in ecological sensitive zone 2 under strict regulation with an effective system of social audit 
it also recommends that in ecological sensitive zone 1 and 2 no new polluting industries should be permitted to be established these polluting industries comes under red and orange categories and it recommends that the existing red and orange category industries should be asked to switch to zero pollution by 2016 with an effective system of social audit and finally the panel urged the ministry of environment and forest to take a number of critical steps to involve citizens what are these steps these are proactive and empathetic implementation of the provisions of the community forest resource of forest rights act and other provisions include establishment of fully empowered biodiversity management committees in all local bodies and promotion of programs and the pattern of conservation of biodiversity rich areas of Udumbanchola Taluka formulated by the Kerala State Biodiversity Board. A radical reform of environmental impact analysis and clearance process and proactive disclosure of all information of public interest interpreted in the broadest possible sense. And the final step is a revival of the Pariyavaran Vahini program and institution of a social audit process for all environmental issues and the model of Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act in Andhra Pradesh. See here, I have given the most important points from the Gadgil report. Take note of these points and whenever you get a chance to read the recommendations other than that I have given today, add that also to your notes. It will be useful to quote in the environment related question in your main answer. There is also another report on Western Guards which is called Kasturi Rangan report. See the rejection of the Gadgil report led to the Union Environment Ministry appointing another panel in 2012. It was headed by space scientist K. Kasturi Rangan and the new panel was asked to examine the Gadgil report. See regarding an important recommendation, the Kasturi Rangan committee drastically reduced the area to be protected from 64% to 37%. It also divided the western guards into cultural lands and natural lands. See here cultural lands are lands where there are currently human settlements. Okay. It also recommended declaring cultural lands into an ecologically sensitive area but ironically no action was taken on either of these reports. These are the main difference between Gadgil and Kasturi Rangan report. See we have not discussed in detail about the Kasturi Rangan committee. We will discuss about it on some other day. Okay. So that's all regarding this news article. In this news article, we saw about the Gadgil report and we saw in brief about the Kasturi Rangan report. With these key learned points, let's move on to next news article discussion. Look at this editorial article. This article talks about the anti-defection law. See this law in news currently because of the unrest prevailing due to political developments in Maharashtra. Okay. See this editorial article is full of anti-defection law and its defects. So in this context, let us cover the important interpretation covered in this editorial article, okay? Before that, the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference, you can go through it. Now let's start our discussion. Firstly, what is this anti-defection law? See the anti-defection law punishes individual MPs or MLAs for leaving one party for another party. It was added in the constitution by the parliament. It was added through the 10th schedule in the year 1985. The 10th schedule was popularly known as the Anti-Defection Act. Note that it was included in the constitution via the 52nd Amendment Act of 1985. Okay. Now what is the purpose of the act? See, its main purpose was to bring the stability to the government by discouraging legislators from changing the parties. So it sets the provisions for disqualification of elected members on the grounds of defection to another political party. See, the law disqualifies a legislator belonging to a political party. There are certain grounds. Now, what are the grounds? See, if the legislator voluntarily gave up his membership of his party or he defied the whip of his party by voting contrary to its direction in the legislative house. Okay? Initially, there was two exceptions provided in the schedule. This would exempt a legislator from disqualification. What are they? The first exception was a split in their original political party resulting in the formation of a group of legislators. Note that if the group consisted of one third of such legislators of that party, they were exempted from disqualification. But note that this exemption was deleted from the schedule through the Constitutional Amendment Act of 2003. This was done because of the frequent misuse of this provision. And the second exception was merger. This can be invoked when the original political party of the legislator merges with another party. 
note that not less than two third of its legislators should have agreed to such merger okay so if a legislator shows that his original party has merged with another party and he and his colleagues who constitutes two third of the legislators of that party then they will be exempted from disqualification okay here you can note the word merger there are certain interpretation to this word merger okay see we already saw that it is this exception that is utilized by large number of legislators across states and even in parliament to defect the ruling party these legislators interpreted for themselves the term merger to mean the merger of two thirds of legislators so here the problem is that they convince themselves that the merger of their original party is not necessary because it is not possible always see the law imposes the condition of merger of the original political party in this case shiva sena in maharashtra which is not likely to happen now or in the future if there is no merger of the original party then these dissents cannot claim any exemptions from disqualification no matter whether they are two thirds or three fourths okay now we will see on what belief the legislators in maharashtra are trying to escape from this anti defection law see a recent judgment of goa bench of bombay high court held that the merger of two thirds of members of the legislative assembly is deemed to be the merger of the original party this seemed to have given the legislators of maharashtra a ray of hope but a key point to be noted in this judgment is it emphasized the need for merger with another party when you take the issue in maharashtra the legislator are trying to make up a new party right so by law they will be disqualified now or later they cannot operate as a separate group in the assembly because the law does not permit them to do so and the another issue is the interpretation of court see the intervention of supreme court under no confidence notice issued against the deputy speaker have thrown up some crucial questions regarding the operation of this anti defection law the first question is whether the court can intervene at the stage prior to the decision by the supreme court see do you remember the case kihoto hollohan case in the year 1993 In this case a constitutional bench of the supreme court has held that judicial review is not available prior to making of decision by the speaker so the crux is that judicial review is not available at an interlocutory stage of the proceeding in the current case the supreme court gave longer time to the dissents to submit replies right and this is contrary to the law see the mandatory period for replying to the charge is 7 days under the rule but the court gave them 15 days and it was an intervention at the interlocutory stage which was barred by the constitutional bench okay another question of considerable importance is whether the deputy speaker can decide the disqualification petition when a no confidence motion is pending against him now take the case of nabam rebia in the year 2016 in this case the supreme court held that the speaker shall not decide the disqualification cases till the no confidence motion against him is disposed of and in the maharashtra case the deputy speaker had assumed the duties of the speaker this is because of the vacancy in the office of the speaker the notice of no confidence is not admitted because he had doubts about the authenticity of the notice and regarding this no confidence motion in the house the house rules clearly says that the notice of no confidence against the speaker or deputy speaker needs to be admitted in the first place that is it should be given first preference and it is done only by the speaker rules do not recognize any other authority for admitting a notice but it is the house which takes the final decision on the motion if the notice of no confidence does not contain specific charges it can be disallowed by the speaker therefore in this case there is no occasion to say that the speaker cannot be a judge in his own cause a note that disallowing a notice does not prevent members from giving another notice complying with the requirements of the rule further the notice can be given only if the house is summoned when you take the maharashtra issue the notice was given when the assembly was not convened so the notice against the deputy speaker can have no validity under the rules therefore it cannot be said that the notice is pending against the deputy speaker from all these we can understand that the anti defection law is facing many challenges since it deals with the political class the challenges are grave 
See this law, that is the anti-defection law, though not perfect, it is a serious attempt to strengthen the moral content of democracy. So the anti-defection law needs to be strengthened and not weakened. Finally, the nation expects better compliance of the law by the lawmakers. So that's all regarding this news article. In this news article, we saw about anti-defection law and some of the flaws associated with the law. With all these key learned points, let's move on to next part of our news article discussion, which is preliminary practice questions discussion. Today we have four prelims questions. I will solve two questions and you will solve two questions. Okay? Now look at this first question. This is regarding Kathakali. Consider the following statements with reference to Kathakali. Kathakali is an art form which is famous in the state of Kerala. Statement 2. The color yellow indicates nobility, divinity and virtue and the color black is used to indicate evilness and wickedness. We have to find the incorrect statement here. See the statement 1, it is correct. This we saw in our discussion itself, right? See whenever you study about a dance form, study where it is famous also. Regarding the statement 2, it is incorrect. This is because the second part of the statement is correct. But the first part is wrong. See, the black color is used to indicate evilness and wickedness. This is correct. But the color yellow indicates saints and women. And the color green only indicates nobility, divinity and virtue. So, statement 1 is correct and 2 is wrong. Since the question demands incorrect statement, our answer will be option B2 only. Now, look at the second question. Consider the following statements regarding King Sarfoji 2. Statement 1, he encouraged only Hinduism and built many temples in Tanjavur. Statement 2, he was one among the four honorary members of the Royal Asiatic Society. We have to find the correct statement here. See, statement 1, it is incorrect. We saw that he liberally funded the construction of churches and schools run by Christians. Likewise, he continued the endowments to Muslims initiated by his forefathers. So, he not only encouraged Hinduism, but also Christianity and Islam. So, statement 1 is incorrect. Statement 2, it is correct. This we saw in our discussion. So, our correct answer here will be option B2 only. These two questions are quiz questions for you. Find the answer and post it in the comment section. The mates questions based on today's discussion is displayed on the screen. Write your answer and post it in the comment section. If you like the video, hit the like button, post your comments and share the video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.